right, this is my uh, 1cc playthrough of Aleste, Alest, Alesta, whatever you want to say. It's one of the best uh, uh, classic shmups by Compile. <laughs> and um, this is my, my first attempt at doing commentary and put a little, little polish on it, put a little effort into it. Something that I think I want to do. That's something I think is really interesting. I've, I've listened to uh, Dace at Shmuptopia and some podcasts by Mark MSX and Electric Underground where they both talk about the lack of uh, shmup players and particularly new players having commentary and showing their, showing their gameplay. I think it, it kind of creates this illusion of, of 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 gatekeeping that really doesn't exist. It's, I think it's, it is more like a confidence issue. So here's um, this is a, <laughs> no confidence in making stuff um, and building confidence in my play. But um, I thought it'd be interesting and cool to show some stuff. So, so here we go. So I got this advice on Twitter from Hauser who said, um, in context of like recovering, if you have to recover, just protect your half of the screen, avoid power hubs and not your half. Now, I didn't have to recover in this run, but in, in practice it got me thinking about the screen in terms of thirds and halves. So I'm going to put this up on the screen to try to show you how my um, attention, how my focus and my, or where my attention is on the screen. So, um, where, you, where you can see the screen, that's where I'm looking, where you can't, um, I don't care if there's bullets there, I don't care if there's ships there, I'm focusing really on this left third and to an extent half. So now, the amount of visual information that I have to process is cut significantly more than, than half of what I was looking at before. Um, I, I can only worry about, I only have to worry about threats that are coming in, anything in that right side of the screen, I don't care if it's bullets, I don't care if it's ships, until it enters into my focus area, I can just ignore it. So, my mental stack is a lot lighter, um, I'm looking at like particularly the enemies on my side, their patterns, um, any, anyone who wants to get a little nasty gets a little cute, and on the right side it's like, I don't have to, I don't have to worry about it. So this was a big level up for me to be able to kind of take this advice on and immediately apply it to something. Because I've seen uh, Mark MSX videos and some Shmup, Shmup Junkie videos about controlling space. And it's it all makes sense, but to actually do it in practice is um, something else. So I'm going to stop here, and you'll see at the top of the screen is the, uh, the two power-ups. It's my power-up. And <laughs> what's going to happen is this is where I don't take... Um, the other part of Hauser's advice, which is to not go for power ups and not in your half. Now it looks like it's on my half now, but as you'll see, we'll go on a we'll go on a little adventure. So we'll, we'll <laughs> proceed. So here I am salivating, going to get three power ups that I probably don't even need, but it just looks so juicy. So I'm like, let me go get it. I'm playing really nice so far. Get a little cocky. And as you can see here, I completely lose control of my half of the screen. It's filled with bullets, it's filled with enemies, and it's only about to get a little bit worse. So I'm freezing here so you can see just how far gone I am from where I was and where I ideally want to be to get these th to get these three power ups that I didn't need. And um, if I had a better handle on software, and hopefully I'll get better at this in the future is what what I, what I want to show here is that it is more than likely that I have completely lost track of those two red enemies which have some pretty like funky funky movements where they'll kind of come in and swoop out and I don't think I saw them come in super well so I don't know where they're going to go so I am in a terrible spot here but I do get out and we're going to watch that again cuz that was pretty sick ooh <laughs> Now we're back to the plan, and that's pretty much how it goes through, through the whole run. I don't really have much else to to say. I'm gonna watch this again. If there's anything interesting, I'll, I'll pop in. But uh, here we go. This is my one CC no miss of a last a last day. However you want to say it, it's a wonderful game. I know more people should be uh, right off the bat here. I pick up the weapon two power up. The, the numbered sub weapon. There's eight of them. I probably know what half of them do off the top of my head. Cause once I found number two, I saw that it was like, like oh my god, it's like the Eskato ship. You get this big shield in front of you, and stuff like this, where you just sit on enemies and they run into you. 
I really like that. And then you also get a very strong charge shot, which is super useful for the, the uh, kind of Xanax style mini bosses that appear, that appear later on. And these key pickups here, they power up your main weapon, which is you see you went from one shot in the front of the ship to two shots coming out the wings, and the next one kicks it out even further. So I go up to the top of the screen here so that these guys who kind of shoot their armor shells off, they actually don't. Um, it never appears on the screen when you go up high. So that's just a little less things I have to think about. There's one of them. So right here you see the charge shot went off. It always goes off. I didn't let go of the button. It's just what happens at that, that part of the game. Um, nothing I really... I, I never ever, it's never affected me negatively, but just something... Interesting that I guess, for whatever reason, at that point in the game, it stops reading the input, or reads the input as nothing happened. Ooh, and I could almost got clipped there. Um, and that's just kind of like how it goes when you're playing a game with crazy slowdown. And I'm not managing rank, I don't even really understand how rank in this game works, but... My feeling is is that I blow it out so <laughs> so high that the slowdown kind of balances it out. But then in those cases where things do start to leave the screen, it gets pretty gnarly. All right, so now here I got the main whip I'm all the way powered up, and you can see it actually puts the shots to the side of your ship. And what this does is it gives you protection past your ship's hitbox, which is awesome. So for all the destructible bolts, you can start getting this lateral movement. And like that, like that, I'm totally safe to just kind of swing into those things and into into, into one hit enemies too. So it's it's really nice as long as the shot limit doesn't get you. <laughs> it's, it's pretty consistent. I wouldn't count on it, but you can you can you can rely on it. You can mostly rely on it as long as you know that it's not a hundred percent. Point blanking is one of my favorite things to do, especially on a boss, so I really like this guy. So this isn't just celebratory fire, I'm actually trying to get a sense of the timing for how fast I can uh, regenerate a charge shot. And one thing I think is really interesting about this game in particular is the second, the second that the stage starts, there is shit being thrown at your face. And not a lot of games do this. Um, especially since I've played this, I've noticed that a lot of games will give you this sort of um, get your bearings moment, and there's absolutely none of that in this game. This game and maybe compiles there on the whole. Um, still pretty new to their to their catalog, but where I think a lot of games that I've played so far, a lot of the more modern games, is about bullet manipulation and routing. And there's it's almost none of that in this game. Um, everything everything here is, is is like pattern recognition, and like knowing the enemy, knowing what they want to do, knowing what their uh, I guess what their, what their damage output is, what their intentions are, and managing it. And then what comp 
Pilos does is just kind of introduce these enemies and then just start layering them and layering them and layering them in more um, unique ways to throw the, to throw the player off. And I think it's really cool, and I think it's it's something that um, I don't know, from my limited playtime, I'm finding very um, unique and, and, and refreshing. Some people might find it really easy. Uh, for a dummy like me, <laughs> like, it takes a while. To, like I'm a pretty slow learner with stuff. It took me a while to start um, figuring out uh, what was going on, what enemies I had prioritized, who was giving me the most trouble. Um, yeah. So, for example, these little pizza pie, little pizza slice guys coming up. So I make sure to always take them out. So I like holding those corners so I can always kind of just drop back and clip them with the shield. Because if you let them go, they start flying uh, straight up towards the screen, um, right under your ship. And it's very uncomfortable to have to dodge them. Once your focus is on there, everything else all of a sudden is an aimed bullet. <laughs> it certainly seems that way. Right, so this is the first armored mini boss. You can only be damaged with the sub weapon, which is something I wish I knew when I was playing Xanak, because I spent a lot of time not getting hit and trying to time these things out. So, that's also why I practice getting my charge shot up so I can get uh, two shots in one cycle and be double that shot as soon as possible. At this point in the stage, I think it's 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 fair to say that you've seen, that you've seen everything Kapal wants to show you in every challenge that that they put forth. You overcome by this point. And you, you, you know how to do it. So you're kind of like locked in here, and it can start to to dread. Um, at least, <laughs> at least it's sort of like that for me watching this. I know when I was playing it, I was still kind of white knuckling at this point. But um, I think that's a, a pretty fair complaint for compile games and for compile style games. I played other games where I where I do find that um, they start to feel a little bit long for for exactly that reason. It's just you're not showing me anything new. Why is this repeating over and over again? Um, but I think also perfect timing. <laughs> they, they just got it under the belt. We get to the boss, and here here we'll see some of that uh, that aforementioned bullet manipulation. Just to really just to move around the screen a little bit. So pop up here, get here, get get under, and go for bolt streaming or whatever the whatever all the, the cool the cool kids call it. Um, I learned that from playing the gun bane tutorial. <laughs> and here it comes in handy. guys show up, these little um, circular guys who move fast and shoot slow, and they're pretty manageable here, but I'll tell you, uh, I did start I did start playing uh, a less runs with, uh, with a turbo mode enabled so that the slowdown is gone. I think they have, they call it comfort mode on the, the M2 collection, and in that mode, these guys are absolutely disgusting and it's a very tough part of the stage so all that is to say that the slowdown is a big part of this game let me get a ton easier and, it, and i don't know what the intention was here because it's tough to say if they were developing what kind of hardware they're developing this on i know they were big msx developers so i don't know how, how much they counted on the, the slowdown being a part of the the bullet and the enemy design but I'll tell you that part, those guys are absolutely nasty. And hopefully I'll be able to get some uh, really cool footage of the of the super motor actions. Thank you. 
these circular guys uh, look easy. <laughs> look easy when you take them out, but they can they can be really erratic. I've lost I've got clipped by them quite a few times in, uh, in other runs. These um, little volcanoes, the blue volcano turrets, that's what I'm gonna <laughs> call these now, are super important to take out when they're on your side of the screen because they do start to shoot up um, from the bottom if you do let them go. So I do make that a priority, but you'll see some of that here. see that when you hit him with the main shot, he reflects it back. Now you can't take damage from that, but bullets can hide it. So I highly suggest not firing on him, and only kind of firing, or firing, or firing around him, because it can get really, uh, <laughs> gets really uncomfortable. that I got the extend, but a little bummed out that it ruined the intro to probably my favorite track in this game. Um, I think it just makes you feel like a badass pilot uh, shooting up plant a alien AI, <laughs> whatever the story is in this game. But um, I absolutely love this stage. I think it's gorgeous. I think going from the eye meltingly garish uh, green color of the first stage that this is on par with like a, this is on par with like a Super Nintendo as far as I'm concerned. I, I haven't played Super Nintendo in a while, but this seems um, as good as anything that was on the stage. I wouldn't be mad <laughs> at my friends who had 16-bit games if I was playing this. Maybe the slowdown would bump me out. Well, did a Super Nintendo, they'd be slowing down too, right? Wouldn't they? Thank <laughs> you. 
So I'm not particularly interested in stories and games. Um, definitely like arcade games and things like this. I think a little bit of taste is really um, enough story to have, uh, I guess, like setting, like a little table dressing, um, a little bit of a sense of place. But other than that, is I, I, I couldn't tell you one thing about any, any of these games that I've, that I've been playing. But um, I would still call this stage storytelling. And I think it's the best example of it in this game. Uh, previous to this point, the first stage is like could have been versus the, you know, the military. The, the, there's like a, there's some desert. There's some blue. But here, you really start to see this looks like a city that plants have invaded and taken over, and are taking over the buildings and really causing a lot of destruction. And I think that's super cool. Obviously, it would have been nicer to see that uh, earlier on, but um, I think besides something like something like Eschatos or Rayforce or certain games where they really do manage to tell a story through all this stuff, a lot of games come to seem just like random. Like, who, who the hell knows what's going on? But this is um, just another reason why I think this is my my, probably my favorite stage in this game. Here's the mini boss for this stage. He could be a little nasty. Um, the trick is is to move him, up, get him to move up, and then take that space under him and pop. Him. But you want to do it fast because if you take too long, he will. There will be other enemies on the screen, and you are not going to want to be above him in that space. Alright, here's this new um, bug kind of enemy type. And look where they set up and look at that angle. It is such a big problem. So those are really important to take out. But here, using a little of my gun vein tutorial and trying to figure out how to get under them and get them the hell off this. Get, them, get off my screen. Get off my TV. Oh, it's probably worth mentioning um, what you guys are watching is the digital output of the uh, of the Mister FPGA uh, analog that I have. I have the analog I/O, and I'm actually playing this on a CRT. Which I suggest if you are um, over 40 like myself, I suggest you think about getting a CRT because the difference that it makes in lag is huge. And my reflexes ain't what they used to be. Yeah. <laughs> 
This guy looks a lot worse than he is. Um, I think everything, all the turrets being lined up in the middle make it pretty easy to manage. Um, definitely want to do it quick before um, anything else starts showing up on the screen. At this point, having the um, fully powered up gun where you can protect your sides from these uh, the blue destructible bullets seems pretty clutch. I, I wouldn't want to be um, at this part of the stage without a fully powered up gun. Sounds like a like a not a not great time. <laughs> So at this point in the video, here's a big section where I don't have anything interesting to say. So I thought I thought I would talk more about, um, you know, why I'm playing the less um, and, and going back and playing all these older games. Also, I figure it's worth commenting on. I think the lattice uh, background is really cool. I don't know if they like use the lattice to for plants. I guess you like hang ivy on it and stuff. I love to do that in Japan because I'm ignorant. But um, in any event, I think it's a really cool little bit of uh, texture. Of course, plants would have uh, mechanical cyber lattice. So yeah, so I mean, I've been playing games for Jesus, like 35 years, maybe 36 years since I was a since I was a wee, wee little baby spider. I just reached, I got into shmups, still feels recently, I think um, Andrew Junos 2 is the first one I picked up, um, seriously, like I played shmups maybe like once every console generation to be one that I would get into, um, I actually rarely see them, see, I've seen them in arcades since I was like a little baby, uh, I feel like everything was beat em ups and light gun games and, and, and um, fighting games where I grew up, I, you know, even that like, oh everyone saw a Raiden cabinet in Pete's place, I think I've seen Raiden one time in my entire life, and I don't even know when that was. That could have been at one of these, like, hipster barcades. But, um... Yeah, one of the one of the developers that I think I've, I've, I've enjoyed the most and gravitate towards the most is Terror Ring Games. 
And just as I'm learning about it and watching all this stuff, that uh, his games are very influenced by Compile, um, Hudson Soft, and kind of those early uh, TurboGrafx-16, or, or for him, PC Engine games. And I was like, you know what? I, I, I got clears in all of them. I got high scores in quite a few of them. And same thing, I wanted more. Um, also, there was a new, a pretty recent release called Ghana Blade, which I think was in that same um, quote-unquote caravan genre. I'm like, oh, I just want to go to, the, I just want to go to the source for all this stuff, and you know, other things can, other, other things kind of like came together, converged in my life that um, I've been trying to save up to get a Mister for probably about, probably about a year, year and a half now since I heard the project and more into it. So as all this stuff comes together, and obviously I own copies of all of these games, so let's you know, don't think that I'm uh, just downloading things that, that, <laughs> that I don't own already. Of course I own all this stuff. But when you have access to such a huge library, kind of um, all of a sudden, kind of like trying to find a way to like, 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 where do you start? You start alphabetically. You start chronologically. Um, are you? Are you? You start by? Are you playing through genres? Are you playing through different libraries? So it's like pretty overwhelming. So um, I had a couple of ways to kind of like organize my way through it, and actually do this with schmucks too. When I first started, when I when I first got into, where I'm like, okay, this is awesome i want to play absolutely everything constantly all the time and then probably a lot of a lot of new players do this for, for shmups and for other genres is i just grabbed every single thing that i could afford that was on sale that looked cool um if you were under 20 if you were under 20 bucks if you were in 10 bucks i was i was buying it. i heard one cool thing about it if i like anything about it so i ended up probably amassing a collection i probably had close to 100 games that um that i had some kind of access to almost immediately, and I don't know how hard anything is, if I'm trying to, like, uh, set things up in terms of difficulty, where I'm going from, like, easier to hard, I don't know, um, I think about, like, influences of things, where, let's just say, uh, like, like, Shieldmate DX came out, this looks super cool, I picked it up, day one, I'm so excited, everyone's excited about it, so I'm a little hyped for it, too, um, you know, having very little experience in it, and, I, and I'm playing it, and, you know, uh, it, it's like I'm immediately kind of wondering the history and the influence of it and, and kind of where some of these ideas come from and um, seeing the reactions of more experienced players and how they're relating to it it's very different than coming in like completely fresh and new as a matter of fact a lot of the newer games that, that kind of came out when I started playing this so you're thinking about like Shield Maid Shield Maid um, Grey's Counter the the GM version had just came out, so there's a lot of uh, like I, I guess what you call like bullet manipulation or uh, kind of like grazing, shielding, all these like additional mechanics that aren't part of the I guess like the, the, the Zevious and everything from their formula. So just to kind of come at it as like is uh, in, um, in, in dryness too. So all these things came out, and you would think that was just kind of the standard. But anyway, so. To not be able to relate to these things as people who have been in the genre a long time was a big part of why I wanted to go through the history, and I picked Compile. Alright, here we are at the last stage. Time to put an end to this plant menace. Trying to make children eat their vegetables. Live among us. Awful. <laughs> Here's the point in the run which I think a lot of people are probably familiar with, where you're playing really well, you have all the resources that you want, you're getting towards the end. And here's where you start thinking, is this going to be the one? And I think at that point you can start kind of, you're starting to do your victory lap in your head a little bit, and maybe not your attention is not exactly where you want it to be. You're thinking... Oh man, am I the best player at this game of all time? Is, is, is everyone going to be, oh my god, I can't believe this is this is crazy. Is Mark MSX going to fly me out to the next Schmuck Slam to play this game? What am I going to wear? How much, well, what am I going to pack? And then boom, you get clipped by the stupidest thing that's ever been on the screen before. And you think, how am I ever going to play this good again for the rest of my life? I'm such a failure. And I think that's, um, 
it's a part of it's 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 a it's a very important mental part of the game that obviously is probably the part you get to practice the least. So I guess the best you can do is notice it, notice that kind of stuff. It's not the first time I've seen myself getting flown out to Idaho for some stupid shit I've done in a game. Um, so I, I was able to notice it pretty early on in a, and keep focus here, which is probably a big part of why I was able to finish this run. shooting up the screen, he was like, cancel your ticket. <laughs> That's definitely, um, you're looking at your score, you're looking somewhere stupid, um, you're, you're already thinking about your tweets, um, and that's the guy who gets you. That's the guy who makes you look real foolish. Incredibly similar. In, in fact, I think at a programming level, they're probably all identical in how they're and how they're attacking. It makes it pretty kind of almost like relaxing um, for all the tension of the stage. You're kind of like, okay, I know exactly what to be doing here. I'd be curious to see what um, other developers were doing at this time. This is 1988. As far as um, what, what, what bosses were like, I know early on bosses were kind of like not the, the huge deal that they became in modern gaming, where um, it seems like the boss is really the um, is really the entree, where every where the stage is the appetizer, at least for at least for certain developers.
I have no idea how that didn't hit me. Final boss. Let's see what they got. So far it looks like they got what what every other boss got. Um, the pattern looks more kind of like this like bubbling over. So the speed's a little off. Um, slow down kind of negates a lot of whatever that um that little mix-up is. So you can see there when um, when it does speed up, it does get a little um, a little a little dicey and a little harder to track what's going on. Also, a great reason I like that a shield right in the nose of my ship. This part's cute. Save the day, <laughs> and our score immediately doubles. I like when games do that. I think if you want someone to clear your game, give them a lot of points for doing so. All right, so that was that was Alesta, 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 and that was um that was that was super fun. I'm not sure where I'd put it in, in, in um, terms of all the games that I've played. If I had to, if I feel the need to, to rank it, I'm actually still playing it. Um, 
On the Mister, you can overclock the Z80 chip. You can put it into a turbo mode, which negates all of the slowdown. And you can increase the sprites per line. So I'm, I'm messing with that. Um, I'll leave after the credits rolling. I'll show that you can, when you when you clear the game, you can continue into what's called round zero. I don't know too much about it. Um, like, if it's like a second loop or if it has its own clear mode. I know the score is set, so I immediately love my guy. Whatever. <laughs> I don't really care that much. But um, I know on the M2 port that you can set it to just practice and run through round zero. I'm actually a lot more interested in playing the game through with slowdown turned off and um, and, and the reduced sprite flicker. So, so that's what I'll be doing. And I guess that's a testament to how much I enjoyed it is. I really don't want to be done with it. Um, it doesn't have a hard mode built in, so I'm going to roll my own and um, see where that takes me. And then as far as the next game goes, I'm going right in order, minus the MSX stuff that I don't have really uh, great access to. So I'll be playing Blazing Lasers, which so far I absolutely adore. That soundtrack, oh boy, that's that's... I've been cranking that in the car. Oh my god, I, I, I'm really enjoying it. I'm looking into all the cool little like secrets and power-up tricks and stuff. So, and, and that game has, I think, four modes of difficulty. So, really looking forward to that. All right, here's round zero. It's a lot faster. It's pink. It's got new music. But l like the entire game, you're basically doing a version of the same thing you've been doing the entire time. Which is awesome. Which is super. Which is like really, which is like really fun. But um, yeah, you can get kind of locked in, which I, which I think is is, 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 is is I think it's cool if, if it's what you like. It has a very meditative quality to it, where you're just kind of doing the thing. Once you're in the space that you're succeeding in, you just stay in that space. It doesn't throw too. It doesn't mix it up too much for you. Which I could see some players getting bored with a lot of, a lot of I think of, of, I mean, the the Venn diagram of shmup players and shm, and, and, and ADD or shmup induced ADD is a circle so I can see a lot of a lot of uh, veteran players getting kind of bored but for me where this is not only is the genre new but but going back to these older games that I didn't play back in the day it's all new it's all new to me there's, there's zero nostalgia here. I, I do not feel any of it Stanley jumping right back to round six. And I think it's harder. I can't really I can't really tell. I know I got my ass kicked here. Yeah, so if anyone has more knowledge of, uh, of this, of, of kind of what the deal with Round Zero is, leave something in the comments. Hit me up on Twitter, SpidersSTG. I think there's an underscore between Spiders and STG, because... I gave me handle Spiders, but they wouldn't let me have it. And I don't know who this other Spiders is. It's kind of a stupid name, I don't know what, what they think they're doing with it. So spoiler alert, this is where I get clipped. I think I have it I think I have it in the intro for this video. Yeah. And I think that the way that, that the round zero is distinguished from the rest of the game, this all feels like bonus time, like extra time. So I'm kinda like I'm like, I'm ready to post on Twitter that I crushed it. <laughs> I'm not trying to keep playing this thing that I don't even really understand what the reward is. Which is cool. Um, if I was really interested in it, I love that, that the M2 port has this, this opportunity to practice it. But I, I don't know. I, I, I guess I, I'm not sure what the reward is at the end. And um, after, I, after I do get, uh, you know, 
lose all my ships, and I continue. It continues, it continues me on to round six, but I'm not sure if it's the uh, round zero round six or the regular game round six, so I can't even continue into this mode, so I'm, I'm just... That little bit of the confusion was enough for me to be like, all right, th that, th this is it. I don't know if, 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 if you're going for an LS2 all, or obviously the score is not being added up, or if there's more score in this mode that you can get, or if it loops infinitely, or I have no idea. So I don't care. <laughs> but I may care enough in the future to look more into it, or hopefully I can, I can get some more information. Surprisingly, not a ton, not a ton of great information on this game. It's not a... Um, I don't know. I, I, I think it's it, it seems more popular in uh, in retro gaming circles than in shmup circles, if that makes sense. That's kind of where I see a lot of the, a lot of uh, where we get my best information from. All right, and that is going to be it. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed it, and I enjoyed it, and I think I'm going to keep making these. So, see you next time. <laughs>